Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. by Supreme Moore Omukunde, a Democrat from Milwaukee who's running to represent the 17th Assembly District. Thank you for joining us, Supreme. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate being here. So you are currently a um, member of the county board. Do you, uh, what made you decide that you want to make the jump to Madison? I know some Democrats from Milwaukee get frustrated at the Capitol, uh, given uh, the current makeup, they're not always to get not always able to pass a ton of bills. What made you want to make the leap? Well, I think it's really important that we have good representation in Madison. Uh, I've been on the county board for five years, and many of the things that I want to do um, have a state answer. And I want to make sure um, that I could have a great partner at the state. And uh, I couldn't think of a better partner than myself for some of the things that we want to do, um, especially when it comes to uh, making sure that we get our fair share and shared revenue, that we get a fair deal from Milwaukee County. That's something that we pass at the county board asking um, uh, Madison to pass some law so that we can get a fair deal on our economic situation. We can take care of some local things. Um, and I figured that the district needed a voice um, that had been there doing the work. Um, and could make sure that we have that that uh, representation. Because as everyone knows, the county board is an arm of the state of Wisconsin. And so I wanted to make sure that uh, we had that great connection and that arm was reaching out um, in good ways. Um, one of the issues that the state is gonna be facing is tax collections falling. Uh, Governor Evers has warned that they may fall by as much as $2 billion this year. Um, what would you do to try to address that uh, shortfall? Would you be focused on cutting spending, raising taxes and fees? How would you try to offset that loss? Well, uh, I, I think that he is right. I think we can expect for um, taxes and, um, and revenues to greatly decrease because of COVID-19. And even in certain situations, like in Milwaukee County, we were already having budget shortfalls. I think one of the things that we can talk about is how that the top earners in Wisconsin were getting tax breaks, where um, they got 60% of the benefit, and then the other 40% of the benefit was less to the, to the rest of like the 99 percenters to deal with. So I think that we can look at rescinding some of those tax breaks that we got for wealthier people um, in the state and also at the federal level as well. We need to be uh, talking about uh, those at the federal level who also, uh, the, the, the laws at the federal level that passed that helped to rescind uh, or, or help those individuals out as well. Um, we have property tax cuts that uh, reduced, um, if you look at income, corporate and property tax cuts, uh, it reduced their revenues by about $1.7, $1.8 billion. Um, and Again, those top earners got to benefit from 60% of that, while the rest of us had to deal with the rest. Um, when it comes to uh, the capital, another big issue coming up is going to be redistricting. Um, right. The governor has launched his People's Maps Commission. Um, obviously, the Republicans who control the capital want to be the ones drawing that next set of district lines. Who do you think should be drawing district maps and boundaries? Well, I've always supported a nonpartisan um, panel to draw districts. Um, I think that uh, we have to be very careful um, because even in a, non, in a nonpartisan uh, commission, if folks are appointed by partisan folks, um, it still will have a tinge of uh, partisanship. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, Gill versus Whitford right now. And, and the offsets from that, and that's the uh, uh, the district the district case. That I don't know if everyone remembers the John Oliver show that highlighted the state of Wisconsin on its on its gerrymandering um, episode. Um, I think it's really important that we have someone uh, or a body that looks and what's in the best interest of voters, and so that voters can choose uh, their representatives and not the other way around. Uh, I think it's really important that we be as independent as possible, and we have a check on the power grabs that take place as a result of that. You can't have um, 40%, uh, percent, 50% of the people voting for one party and then that party only making up a third. 
of the uh, representation. Do you support legalizing both medical and recreational marijuana in Wisconsin? Yes. Um, in short, yes. Um, I think that there are some steps we need to take before that, though. Um, I passed a resolution. I offered a resolution on the county board and the Milwaukee County Board um, calling for any um, legislation that looks at legalizing marijuana also have decriminalization attached to it. Um, I think that we must decriminalize because I have friends of mine who are uh, around the age of 40, 40 plus. The worst thing that they ever did was have that second bag of marijuana on them that makes them a felon. And it, it was hard for them to get housing, to go to school, certain jobs wouldn't hire them, they couldn't really have a good livelihood, et cetera. Um, so we do, we definitely need to decriminalize first and to ensure that those who are suffering criminally from this aren't, aren't looked at, oh, you did that then, and we're gonna still regard you as a criminal. I do think that we should legalize as well um, so that we can avoid further prosecution. And also if we're going to be using these dollars, we need to make sure that they are an economic boom for uh, those who have been particularly shut out of, uh, of the economy, largely black and brown folks as well. Um, what do you think the legislature should be doing to address um, the racial disparities and inequalities in that have been a problem in Wisconsin for decades? Well, uh, first and foremost, they should do like we did in Milwaukee County and declare racism a public health crisis. Um, I think it is a public health crisis as a black man who lives in the city of Milwaukee. Um, not only um, state sanctioned violence, but also if I look at our rates of diabetes and asthma and living um, closer to uh, places where they are dumping um, waste, um, et cetera. I find these in my community. As a young person, I was riding a big wheel and I was there was this green slime on, on the, the, the largest of my wheels and I wondered what that was. And later I found out it was because we lived near, uh, in our neighborhood was near a dumping site um, for um, um, for offshoots of, 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 of burning coal or ash. And we have arsenic in, in our, in our, uh, in our soil, wow. uh, we have other things in our soils. Um, we need to make sure um, that uh, we declare a public health crisis and we must use a racial equity lens in everything that we do. From everything to parks, from everything to where we fix our parks, how we fix our parks, what we do, we must use a racial equity lens. And if you look at even COVID-19, the hardest hit areas are in black and brown communities. And so we need that racial lens, that racial equity lens at, uh, in the state legislature, and we should be doing everything we can with that. And also understand that there are some of us who came here uh, against our will, and we have a legacy of our captivity here. We have a legacy of oppression here. And uh, someone has to take responsibility for that, and we can all work together to make sure, to ensure and make sure that we are looking out for everyone. I'm guessing this next topic is something that you hear a lot about at the county already, um, property taxes. Um, Wisconsin has some of the highest property taxes in the country, um, which is why what school districts and local governments um, can levy in terms of property taxes is limited or capped. Um, they can pass referendums to exceed the caps, but if you're elected to the legislature, would you vote to keep the property tax caps in place with the current system or eliminate them? Uh, I would eliminate them. I think it's really uh, important. As a local elected official, I know how critical local control is. Um, there have been many times where you go and you have this great uh, work that you want to do and you want to add a little bit to the levy maybe, or you want to find creative ways to do some great work around parks or around communities or around doing some violence interruption or things of that nature. Um, and you go to the chairperson and they, and they call you into their office and they say, look, Supervisor, you broke my budget. And so uh, we can't do what you want to do or you have to find other ways or take off some other things. You have to eliminate this other great program that uh, that needs uh, some attention too. But and if, if you want, if your piece of legislation, your resolution just broke my budget. So I would eliminate them and make sure that local governments had control over what was happening in their areas. Nobody knows uh, better than, than those at home. No meal is better than a home cooked meal, if you will. I think I know the answer to this next one, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, counties and municipalities rely on the property taxes to fund a huge percentage of the costs and services they provide. Do you think it's time to consider alternative sources of revenues for local governments, um, allowing them, for example, to levy a um, 
half cent local sales tax, for example. And this is something that we've been talking about in Milwaukee, I know, but if you could uh, share your thoughts, that would be great. Well, I, like you said, you already know my answer. Um, yes, we have to come up with many different ways um, of gaining uh, new sources of revenue. I think um, property taxes, our main source of revenue, our other only really viable source of revenue was um, the, uh, uh, the the vehicle registration fee um, or the wheel tax. And um, knocking on doors and talking to voters, they're like, yeah, you're a county supervisor. What's up with that wheel tax that you gave us? And I had to apologize to them. I said, we gave you, um, you actually get a double wheel tax because you live in the city of Milwaukee and you live in Milwaukee County. So uh, folks who live in like Glendale or Wauwatosa only have the county wheel tax. And so we spent a lot of time debating with the county executive, Chris Abley at the time, about um, the vehicle registration fee. However, the reality was that was one of his only sources of revenue, um, ways in which to get revenue. We disagreed on how it should be done. However, the, the reality was we needed another source of revenue. We needed other revenue sources. So what we did at Milwaukee County was pass the fair deal for Milwaukee County, which, which allowed us to... Um, increase uh, or have a, 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 a tax increase or, 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 a, or a, a, a way in which we can pay for uh, things on the local level to have a, a sales tax increase, which is still lower than like 40 other states in the country. However, uh, the, the only thing with that um, is we can pass it and focus on property tax relief and parks and things of that nature. However, we have to also have a values uh, added tax as well because it's still a regressive tax and it can, it can affect poor folks um, in the same way, especially if you're buying like bread or milk or meat or anything of that nature, you're going to feel the brunt of that. You go to the grocery store with your $40 and you're paying seven, eight of that in taxes. Um, it lessens what you can bring home and uh, it actually has a greater effect on those. Someone who's wealthier, they're probably not even going to feel that or see that. But we need to make sure that we have things like a values added tax as well. Another tax question here, which is Wisconsin has never found a stable way to pay for its highways and roads. Mm -hmm. uh, Governor Evers has suggested raising the gas tax um, for the first time in a long time. Would you vote to raise the gas tax in Wisconsin? Well, I think that everything is on, is on the table. Um, when you look at uh, the gas tax, I'm, a, I, I'm really a fan of it fluctuating because it fluctuates and then trying to make sure that we stay with that fluctuation. Um, and we actually need to also think about ways in which we can move away from vehicles in and of themselves. We need to think about innovative ways to um, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. We need to think about public transit. We need to think about you know electric cars and things of that nature. So um, I do wanna make sure we can pay for our roads. Um, and pay for uh, transit as well. We also, in that same vein, need to be thinking about ways in which we can have more public transit and use our roads less and, and really have a viable uh, transportation system that allows us to use our roads less and drive less as well. Because I know there are many people who could, if they could avoid that morning drive uh, between Milwaukee and Madison and other places in, the, places in the state, they would. And so, yes, so I would be for like, riding with the fluctuation of the gas tax and coming up with even other ways of, way, of ways we pay for our roads. The coronavirus pandemic has hit um, healthcare providers in the state especially hard, um, even as they're playing a key role trying to combat the virus. Do you think the legislature should make hospitals a um, higher priority in the next state budget? Well, uh, I, I really think that hospitals are necessary and no one would argue with that with the fact that hospitals are necessary, especially not right now with COVID-19 individuals need to have uh, some place to go to be well. However, I think that um, it's not just hospitals. We need to invest in the entire healthcare system. Um, we need to make sure that people who are going to hospitals aren't being bankrupted once they leave. Um, you're not leaving with a five, six figure bill bill because you were on a ventilator for a couple of days. Um, uh, if you, there, there's a scale that talks about 20 to $80,000, depending on your stay and your care during COVID-19. We, we also have people who are afraid to get care because they don't want the bills at the hospital. So I think it's important to invest in the entire healthcare system, not just hospitals, especially in places like um, Milwaukee, in the city of Milwaukee, um, uh, because we don't want 
hospitals seeking greener pastures, if you will, by going out to suburbs where they think that people have more uh, income and have more health insurance. So they see themselves as a more viable option. We need to make sure we're investing in the, the entire healthcare system and not, not strictly hospitals per se by themselves. However, if we want to uh, offer people free health care and reimburse the hospitals, I, that, that's something that I would support. However, I, I don't think it's uh, viable to isolate and separate hospitals from the entire health care system. We need to invest largely in the, the entire system, mostly the people. Do you think that businesses that follow all of the prescribed uh, coronavirus practices and recommendations in terms of um, trying to prevent the spread of COVID-19, do you think they should be immune from lawsuits? No, I don't think that we should have a blanket immunity for everyone. I think what that does is that it offers individuals uh, the leeway to be bad actors, if you will. And they can say, well, I did this and I did that. And so it, it frees me up from any liability. Also, you will have workers who work and are taking every precaution that they can um, and and will still get COVID. Some of our frontline workers, individuals, our economy right now is literally being held up by essential workers, individuals who are bagging groceries, individuals who are stocking shelves, individuals who are cleaning offices, individuals who are healthcare workers, individuals who are home care workers. And I don't want anyone to get the sense that they can do the bare minimum to protect these people. And when we have PPE and it's not going towards those individuals who are those frontline workers, especially those who are making um, uh, a poverty wage, um, they're working in our fast food restaurants, et cetera. I don't want people thinking they can do the bare minimum. Um, and then these individuals still get sick and there's no recourse for them. And so I, I do not, Look, want to look at a blanket immunity. I do want to encourage businesses to do the best they can um, by those that work for them. However, I still think that those who work in these businesses should still have a degree of security. Um, one other topic that I'm sure you hear a lot about already is um, public works projects. And uh, do you think that local governments authorizing public works projects should give preference to Wisconsin companies um, when they're looking at um, bidding standards and requirements. Yes, uh, we should we should be looking at um, local companies. We should also be looking at those in local municipalities as well. I know um, I currently represent a district in uh, in the near west side of the city of Milwaukee where uh, the Pfizer Forum is, and I remember driving by there and seeing pickup trucks from Pewaukee, from Brookfield and from other uh, municipalities. And I'm wondering where are all the employees from the city of Milwaukee? Um, we live right here, we live down the street from here. There's $3.6 billion worth of development here. How are we uh, uh, getting in, uh, getting our piece, uh, so to speak? And so, yes, we should prioritize uh, what we do here. Uh, one of the things that we really uh, need to talk about also is uh, climate change and climate justice and economic equity. If we look at um, what are some of the things that we need when we are in, in store, installing solar panels, insulating our homes, retrofitting our roofs, retrofitting our windows? Some of that work that needs to be done to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions needs to come from the city of Milwaukee, needs to come from people who need jobs in the city of Milwaukee. If I have a solar panel and it has a storage unit that requires a battery um, to keep it powered, we need to be making those batteries right here in the city of Milwaukee or in some place locally. Um, that, that an individual can go and get the, get that battery and have fixed, restored, et cetera. Um, Adelphi is a business that made batteries in the city of Milwaukee, and we need to make sure that we can bring that kind of company back as we focus on a green uh, and clean, ener in clean energy economy. And I know we're almost out of time, but um, just one more quick question, or try to be quick, um, but sure. the August 11th primary is, uh, gosh, I guess it's three weeks away now. Um, what do you think makes you the best candidate in this race? There's obviously a lot of interest in the seat. Well, um, in, in the primary, um, I know my uh, two opponents, both of them are great guys. I have nothing negative to say about them. I've known them for some time. I think my background um, and the path that I've taken to arrive here is distinct. Um, I, I have a pop mine is a policy path and I'm a community organizer. I've organized um, with uh, the River West Neighborhood Association. I organized with the Sherman Park Community Association. I organized with um, 
uh, with the boys and girls clubs with their with their with their teens. Um, had my own mentoring program, um, and I think that my pathway is just different than those. And I think that we are in a, a, a critical time right now. And I think I'm the right person for the right time. There are some great things that we can do, but we must seize the time um, that we're in right now. And I think that I'm the most equipped to do so. Um, I'm able to build relationships. Um, I have some of them already. I have a great work ethic and I'm a public servant. I think some of the things that we need to do around legalizing and decriminalizing marijuana with uh, Melissa Sargent, who's, who's at the state, are some great things that we can do there. Um, I passed a resolution and I had a conversation with her the last time I was at the Capitol about it. I think some of the things that we need to do on the uh, Joint Finance Committee, I'm very uh, familiar and have great relationships with, uh, with Evan Goyke and Latanya Johnson, the, the two of the Democrats um, that are on the, uh, the, the Joint Committee on Finance. And so there's some great things that we can do there. And I can um, have those conversations with them and have worked with them for long periods of time. I think that I have certain relationships that I can uh, that I can work with, and also others that I can continue. And also, we need to make sure that we are prioritizing things in a certain way. We need to lovingly push the governor um, to allow us to get some of our Heroes and Cares Act dollars at the local level. We need to lovingly push um, in in the uh, Democratic Caucus to make sure that our health care system is not just a hospital care system or a prescription drug uh, system or um, a a, a, a uh, or an insurance system. Um, there are a lot of things that we need to do in that caucus, and I think I'm the candidate to do that. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know you're busy, and we appreciate you taking the time with us. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip. Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.